So why are you so concerned about my life? <clears throat> and why I don't go to church anymore? What is wrong with you? Tell me. You see, if it's my life you're waiting on, to in your eternal life, you're going to hell. It's a guarantee. I'm going to say it again. If it's my life you're actually waiting on, it's me for me to be going into a church. If going to a church is going to give you eternal life, it's a guarantee you are going to hell. Please, you're going to hell for real. Yeah, because this will never happen. You know, they misdiagnosed me at the hospital in 2017, December 9th. One of the doctors is an elder in the church, Dr. Courtney Cummins. Now, the same church that I used to attend, Dr. Cummins, we sat in the church for over five years. I was a member of that church for 10 years. Bishop Desmond Whitaker. And let me all tell you something. Not one person from that church has ever said to me, I heard about what happened, the misdiagnosed, that they actually misdiagnosed you at the hospital. I am so sorry to hear that. Here is $10. Here is $100. I understand that you can no longer work. So, um, so, here is um, $100 by yourself address. Yeah? Dr. Cummins has never said to me, Oh, Lovell, I can't believe such thing has happened to you. I am so sorry about that. Remember, he's an elder in the church. I wish I could fix this, Lovell. I wish there was something that I could have done to fix this. But since I can't, let me see how things are with you. Okay, forget all of them. Forget all of them. Go and visit my four children. And said, I'm so sorry about what happened to your mother. But if there is anything I can do to fix are to be a support to you. This is your mother. Dr. Cummins has never done that. Bishop Desmond Whitaker has never done anything. None of the leaders or the members of the church has ever said anything. I gave my all. What was all of that about? What was all of that about? What was all of that about? It's God himself in all his holiness and righteousness saying to me, come out from among them and separate yourself from church people. Listen to me. Don't be afraid of the drug dealers and the gangs that you hear in Cayman and across the world. The world, those are not gang yet. You're not experienced gang until you experience gyang in the church. They are some of the most wicked people on the planet Earth. Are people in the church. Listen, make a mistake and you have a misunderstanding between you and a pastor. No question asked, they're killing you. No question asked, they gyang upon you. No question asked. Church people just cut you off. So you don't believe me? It's not something that I would even want to happen to you. But I'm telling you about the facts. And don't tell me, oh, this is just, it's not every church. Every single church is the same across the world. I've seen it. I've seen it done to people too many times. And I never knew that this, that would have happened to me. They'll cut you off. They'll gang upon you. They'll scandal you. It's worse than 
the gang out there on the street. The gang out there on the street will shoot a man. And they'll gang a man and they'll shoot him. And that's the end of it. But church people will not just shoot you. Church people will tear you down. They will set up roadblock on you. And do everything to stop you from progressing. Church people are wicked people. Listen, they are anointed to be wicked. Listen, when you see, you've watched the, the, um, the movie, The Life of Jesus. And you watch that movie. I'm sure you've watched that movie. Yeah, when you watch that movie and you see the pilot refusing and saying washing his hand and whatever, and they say, "Who you want, Barabbas or Jesus?" And they, they say, "Say no, Jesus." Hey, that's the church. That's the action of church people. If you slip, you slide. They say, "Sinner out." When you see the people who you used to sit down with in Sunday after Sunday and when they come up and say, and they say, greet somebody and everybody come and do it. And everybody hug up you. Just make the mistake and slip. And you hear something out on the street out there so, about you. The same person them hug 12 o'clock. And the same person them a hammer down. Church people, are you crazy? I said, if church people is, if going to church is going to make you see face, Jesus Christ's face, girl, you go to hell. It's a guarantee you're going to hell. Because no powers on this earth, yes, sir, can make me walk in a church. Oh, I've heard people say all kinds of things like that. And listen to me. I've heard people say that. And talk about the Bible. Look about the Bible. And those people of old, prophets of old, the code they have gone through, they never have no Bible. So they never have anything to use as a guideline to their life. But we have the Bible, so there is no justification. You can't justify your action towards me and, and use it to say the Bible. Don't, don't, don't your ignorance and your hatred to compare to those people of God in the Bible. Don't compare yourself with those people of God in the Bible. You can never do that. You can never do that. So you don't try to use your ignorance on me and tell me about people. Oh, that, that's a scripture. No, no, no. No scripture in the Bible until they say you must hate me. No scripture in the Bible until you say you must resent me. No scripture in the Bible until you say you must tear me down. Which one? Which one? Show me which scripture that Bible tell give you the authority to destroy my reputation. Tell me where. Which one of the scripture tell you that? When? How? Yeah? So please, don't compare your life and don't compare the word of God with your ignorance and your hatred. You want the church people gather together? You want the church people unite? Just step on a pastor too. I'm make them even hear say you say something or step on a pass or our leader or somebody of influence in the church. You want the church people together? You want your prior chain and agreement prior broke down about you? Yes, that is the only way church people gather and unite. They will unite to destroy the very ground that you walk on. So that's the reason why I don't pray nice, cushy, cushy prayer. When I know that they after me i'm and dangerous i don't play i am not one of those person because i know the heart of the church that they are and don't blame the devil don't blame the devil please don't get the devil involved in your ignorance please don't get the devil involved because the word of god says submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so you know come tell me nothing so the devil met the church of Axel. The devil not met the church of Axel. That is how the church set up to act. It's a place of hatred. Place of malice and resentment. My relationship, my therefore, with God Almighty is not based on you. My day of reckoning will not be governed by who is my pastor and who did I fellowship with. My relationship with God, it depends on 
who, how I serve my children. What kind of life did I model to let them see the light of God in my life? How did I serve my parents? How did I honor and respect my parents? How did I look out for the widow, the fatherless? And how did I serve my husband? How did I submit to his authority? That's my life. And was where the, where I answer. What did I do with the anointing that God placed upon my life? It's not for you, church people. It's not for you. There are some born again people that is in this world that never set foot in a church. And I can tell you that from my perfect example. My father has never set foot in a church. Yeah? But he, let me tell you something. He raised the community. And every man look up to him as a man of integrity. Nobody in my family don't have all the, these kind of mek mek going on in them, in them life and people tearing them down. It's only me who find myself amongst the Eden. Church. Wicked people. Wicked. That's churches where people go and hide them nastiness. Churches where people go and hide them wickedness. Their dirty hands and their dirty heart. That's where they go and cover it up. Church. Yeah. So don't get me mixed up in that. I had to go there and see it for myself. And learn from myself. And the experience was bitter. I had to learn. So this is my testimony. The testimony on our wait pan. If you hear me say, oh. So if a pastor could always call and says, oh, you know, Lovell. Um, she came to, to this church, you know, and we all pray fire down on her and now see the government, whatever. Uh, uh You will never live to see that. You will die. You will die a miserable death for you to see me walk in a church and a pastor put on Pan Lovell. Never in this life cannot put hands on me. Dying, living, no matter what place I find myself. Never. 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 I told my children, when I die, do not bring my carcass amongst the wicked. Did you just hear me? Now you know. And my death is no time soon. So don't wait for it. Because you're going to die and leave me. Hush. By the grace of Almighty God that is on my life, I shall live and not die. Love El Marriott. Stay true to yourself. Separate on yourself from church. That's the only way you want to see Almighty God face. In Jesus' name, stay with yourself. Shalom.